All right, let's watch SCP-155 Predator Street Art. My guys over there at the infographics team, let's go ahead and check it out. Where I would like, and let's watch it, bro. Let's see, let's see, let's see. There's no shortage of graffiti in most downtowns, from simple tags to intricate murals. It can be found in almost any alley, underpass, and subway tunnel. To most people who live and work there, it all blends into the background. But one piece of street art isn't so easy to ignore, since unlike most graffiti, this one is animated. John Freeman, an unassuming- You can still send memes to the Discord, bro, but like, let's let's up the humor a little bit, bro. You know what I mean? Coming man in his mid-twenties was out late one night in April 2004. It was a Saturday, so he'd let loose a little more than he originally intended, and he was starting to feel the effects, so he went out back for some fresh air. This wasn't the most popular bar in the city, so when he opened up the this door nigga and stepped stormed out, depressed. he found himself <laughs> oh completely God. alone. Despite that fact, he couldn't shake the sense that he was being watched. He looked around, squinting and trying his best to focus his eyes. Just then, John thought he spotted someone behind the dumpster, so he decided to investigate. When he looked behind the dumpster, there was no one to be found. Instead, painted on the wall was a piece of street art. It was a strange piece of art too. A half-human, half-owl creature rendered in highly realistic detail. I remember when I was younger, Bryce played Jess at radio. And I used to want to like graffiti. Have any of y'all niggas ever graffiti before? Like I definitely that shit and that shit right there, that little man owl bullshit they got going on, that shit is ugly as hell. And I will drop kick it back into oblivion or wherever it came from. Like some shit from Adventure Time, for real, for real. And why this hand got a ward on it? Anyways, back to what I was saying. Bro, has anybody ever graffitied before? You said yes, I graffiti my school. Look at this thing, a criminal. He's so angry at the world. What the hell? I didn't think he was gonna actually say he did graffiti. I might like I might have like a like a graffiti, like I might put up like plasters and just like graffiti some place in my fucking house, not this house, but when I get one. Detail: the figure was crouched over and its eyes faced outwards, eyes that looked far too real, <laughs> like they were staring at him right out of the wall, following him as he swayed from side to side. There was something so wrong about it: its intense gaze, its sharp beak. It's grasping claws. How could anyone paint something like this? It looked like it could crawl right out of the bricks. Something about the painting made him nervous, but he couldn't look away. He says the owl from Harry Potter. In, beckoning him. There was something about it that John just couldn't resist. He stepped closer until he was close enough. Nigga, to what the <laughs> Why he touch it? What what type of okay, that better be part of this anomalous property. Because if not, niggas is just dickheads. Cause why the hell you go up and touch it? And touch it. What John didn't know was that he was also close enough for it to reach out and touch. I might start watching these videos on 1.25. Hold on, let me see, let me see. Cause this nigga be talking so slow. Let me see, hold on. Him. Before he could react, he saw the painting come to life. The feathers ruffle, the hands prepare to grab, the beak opens up. For John, it was already too late. From inside the bar, the other patrons heard a loud scream from the alley. The bartender ran outside to see what was going on, but when he got there, all he found was a blood stain on the concrete. There was no sign of John Freeman, and there was no graffiti on the wall. This is just one of the dozens of recorded attacks attributed to what the SCP Foundation has designated SCP-1155, or the predatory street art. It can appear on any wall- Is it, is it, is it, is it too fast, chat? It's too fast? I feel like, I feel like, I feel like, you said I'm used to this, so I'm used to the, nah, I'm gonna get one, put 1 1.25, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, put 1.25. Your metropolitan area, but it prefers ones that are out of the way and isolated, such as back alleys, lonely parking structures, subway tunnels, and underpasses. The creature depicted in the street art has the long, sinewy arms of a human, with the head and feathery body of a large owl, and though its pose changes often, it's always facing out, watching. The foundation is no stranger to deadly works of art, such as the infamous SC- I'm not worried about hitting the 10-minute mark, relax, chat. Relax, chat. P-173, the living sculpture who will snap your neck if you stop looking at it. Or SCP-1074, the abstract art capable of psychologically enthralling the viewer and leading them into a state of catatonia if exposed for too long. Catatonia. However, what sets SCP-1155 apart from these other two is the fact that it's incredibly hard to contain and its methods are particularly violent and gruesome. But more on that later. If you spot this odd painting while you're out walking with friends, you probably wouldn't give it a second thought. But if you're alone, it's a different story. This SCP has an almost hypnotic effect <laughs> when viewed by a lone person. Okay. If you spot it, you'd be overwhelmed by curiosity. So basically, don't get caught lacking in the streets, for sure. Okay. And you feel compelled to get a closer look. 
you can potentially resist this hypnotic effect with some effort, especially if you're aware of its anomalous properties, meaning knowledge really is power when it comes to SCP-1155. Once you get within two meters of SCP-1155, though, the creature will jump out of the wall and strike, with attacks usually following the same pattern. First, the victim will be restrained to prevent struggle or escape. The eyes and tongue will then be removed, followed by the amputation of the hands and feet. The victim will then be disemboweled and the intestines and stomach removed, all in as little as six seconds. Not all of these attacks result Jeez. in death. Some Six have seconds? actually managed to survive attacks by the predatory street art, with those lucky Yo, they being like eligible for class A amnestic therapy, courtesy of the Foundation. In most cases, though, there's no survivors to find and often not even a body at all. Once SCP-1155 has begun its attack, and if it remains unspotted, it will snatch up its prey and vanish <laughs> before appearing on the wall somewhere else. The Foundation has made attempts to discover where the bodies end up by equipping D-Class test subjects with GPS trackers, but the results of these tests have been inconclusive. Recorded relocation events have covered distances as small as 15 meters or as far as 800 kilometers, about? but the true range of this Two creature's movement big. is unknown. If caught I mean, in the act of feeding, though, SCP-1155 will disappear, leaving its victim behind. Usually in these cases, the victim will bleed out and die but some have survived. Two such survivors were D-Class personnel, who were used for tests to see what happened when the attacks were interrupted. Both were incoherent and badly wounded following the attacks. Their eyes were gone, and one of them also had his tongue, hands, and feet removed. Nah, but neither could adequately gee. communicate what had happened Damn. to them. The one who still had a tongue claimed to still be able to see, in spite of his missing eyes, and that he was still looking through his stolen eyes. He described what he could see. A kind of grisly pantry, where it appeared SCP-1155 had stashed the remains of its previous victims, perhaps to feed on later. This D-Class managed to escape from on-site quarters during an unrelated containment breach, running back to where he had been attacked by SCP-1155. He was pursued by law enforcement, who had been told by the SCP Foundation that he was an escaped mental patient suffering from serious delusions. The police chased him for several blocks before he disappeared down an alleyway. Officers at the scene reported hearing a scream, but when they got to where it came from, there was no sign of the D-Class. Just a dead-end alley with a blank wall. The other D-Class, the one with no tongue, was successfully relocated to an undisclosed location. While the patient was being moved, though, Foundation surveillance noted an increased level of movement from SCP-1155. The painting was appearing and disappearing, and in each relocation, its posture suggested hunting and tracking behavior, as if it was pursuing the one who got away. The places it was manifesting also became more and more public. At one point, it appeared on the side of a building right in the middle of town, though it was too high up to be reached by any of the hundreds of witnesses. While all of this yeah, was that happening, was really the D-Class being held for medical treatment was becoming increasingly distressed. The Foundation theorized that the entity may have been frustrated at losing its prey, and that it would likely continue to relocate in and out of highly visible areas until the D-Class was returned to it. Because of this, the executive decision was made to take the D-Class to the outskirts of the city. SCP-1155 manifested in the area, and the team left both it and the D-Class unobserved. Both the creature and the D-Class soon disappeared, and SCP-1155 resumed its more manageable hunting behavior. Due to this SCP's ability to jump from place to place, it has proven difficult, if not impossible, Ketter to contain, class. and as a well-earned Ketter class designation as a result. Damn. At first, the Foundation tried physically removing the wall on which the SCP had manifested, but this only caused it to relocate. A similar result happened following attempts to paint over or damage the painting. Current containment procedures involve closely monitoring the disused shopping mall lot where SCP-1155 currently seems to live for lack of a better term. The mall has been marked as condemned, and Foundation agents continually monitor the area, posing as security guards to dissuade any civilian traffic right. from entering the danger zone. Mobile Task Force Pi-1, nicknamed the City Slickers, tried to obscure any surface on which the creature appeared, but this didn't end well. First, the team leader ordered that a vending machine be placed in front of the graffiti while it was located in an alley that transients were known to frequent. This was supposed to be only a temporary stopgap, intended to stop any unsuspecting person from falling under SCP-1155's hypnotic spell. In time, a proper containment zone would be established, with more agents forming a security perimeter around the area. But by the time the extra resources yeah. arrived and okay. the vending machine was moved, the painting had disappeared. It had responded to the obstruction by relocating and reappearing on a wall at a nearby children's playground. The Foundation quickly mobilized, interrupting SCP-1155 in the middle of an attack in order to trigger another relocation. You're not stopping this but one, sadly, bro. several lives were already you lost can't stop by the this time SCP. they arrived. The entire ordeal was a tragic and costly mistake on the Foundation's part. It seems that when SCP-1155 is obstructed, it gets angry. Instances where it relocated after being obstructed more often than not resulted in it moving to a much more public place that would be harder to contain for the Foundation. While it previously appeared in low traffic- You're not- yeah, you're not stopping this SCP, bro. 
attack areas. It now seemed emboldened following containment attempts. And He's literally walking around letting his nuts hang, bro. Hey, you can't, what you about to do to this nigga, really? Keep it a buck. What you about to do? Absolutely nothing, bro. It was readily appearing in public spaces. It was argued that all of humanity would be better off allowing a few people to be taken by SCP-1155 every couple of years than risk it ending up in a heavily populated area where it could endanger who knows how many people before it was noticed. The Foundation continued to research possible containment procedures, though, and eventually figured out the perfect minimum distance at which they could create a barrier so that it wouldn't be noticed by the SCP itself. This was one of their more expensive containment protocols, as it required purchasing an entire mall, only to shut it down and condemn it under the pretense of there being a dangerous sinkhole underneath it. The expense seems to have been worth it, though, as SCP-1155 is currently still inside the parking structure connected to the mall. The mall and the parking structure are under round-the-clock surveillance via motion capture security cameras, and while there have been no other relocations, there's no telling what might trigger one again. So if you live in a big city, and you find yourself walking alone at night, keep an eye on the street art. If you spot a painting of half-human, half-owl that you could swear wasn't there before, resist the urge to check it out and just cross the street instead. Now go check out another- I ain't gonna cap, like, if I ever see, if if I was a graffiti artist, I would definitely go around and start spray painting that around just to troll the SCP people or the SCP community. Cause if you know, you know. Whoever don't know, don't know. But if you know, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely a WSCP. I mean, what are you, what are you, like I said, how are you gonna contain that? You literally can't, it's dumb. I will go around trolling people, bro, for sure.